Yeah, well, I'll, I'll come back a, 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 actually and add to what I said. When I said I, d I wasn't uh, sure or didn't know enough about uh, Upabio to know whether she was uh, uh, just a con person and didn't believe anything like pop off. Um, actually, thinking about it, th there is evidence that she is because if you go to her website, or it's, it's actually not under her name, it's under Liberty Church Nigeria, or it might have a different name. There's a link in my uh, promotional video. The, the whole setup of the page is very, very much like Peter Popoff's. Um, you've got the donation sites, you've got the links, you've got the, um, the sale of books, DVDs, etc. You can submit prayer requests, uh, which I did as a matter of interest. I um, sent them a message saying that my two-year-old daughter uh, cried in her sleep and uh, screamed occasionally. What could I do? I don't know whether they took it seriously or not, but I did get a response from them. Uh, and they said that the solution was to take her to the uh, to take her to Nigeria in June for some deliverance mission or something. So there we go. Your, I, your I, child I cried. Is, um, your child cried in her sleep. So you should get your you, you should get your passport, and you should yeah. pay for an international flight to go to Nigeria to have some yeah. snake oil salesman say uba uba over that child and then charge you whatever it is that they're not going to charge you for their books and their videos and their other mega donations which will give you your per her personal phone number damn is it that's right um, which is more embarrassing what's, what's, is it more embarrassing that people are not adequately... it's also important ah, i hate this delay this lag is a problem. I'm sorry. I'm just going to carry on, and uh, I, I apologize to, to the viewers for this. We'll see if we can work that something out before the next show. Um, I, I've spoken before about how uh, religious indoctrination can be child abuse, uh, and I stand by that. I've been criticized for saying it. I'm not saying that all religious teachings uh, amount to uh, child abuse, but some certainly can. Now, pause for a moment and think what the psychological effect on a small child is think of the that case i referred to as i said there were three children in that house all of them were being tortured what's this that two of them survived but what's the psychological damage that they would have suffered or the the the, the damage to a, a children much younger four five-year-olds that are thrown out of their homes left on the streets and hopefully organizations such as stepping stones will, will be able to assist them but the psychological damage that's done to a child an innocent child being told that they are possessed that's disgusting that's what really sickens me and you know i'll, I'll throw it, in this for you it's an extreme it's slightly different but it's not that much worse than the your what you call moderate christians who tell their children that they're born in sin and deserve to burn in hell, or that they're sinners unless they believe in Jesus. I, this is disgusting. Yep. It really is. Anyway, we've got a, yep. um, another live caller, I believe. All right, go ahead. Go, sorry, do go on, Arab, whilst we bring the caller in. All right, well, yeah. yeah. One of the videos that, that Foxcroft uh, was involved with was where he had picked up a child that had been ostracized not only by her family but by the entire community. And they took her into a secured uh, building to interview her, to ask her whether she herself that she was a witch. And, of course, she's very depressed. She says she is a witch because they told her she's a witch. And what the hell does she know? She's never been educated on anything. She has everybody that she thinks is an authority on anything is telling her this. And then while they're sitting there interviewing her, there are people that are pelting and pounding on the sides of the walls of the building to get at in and kill this girl they want to they want to kill a child a girl of about four years old because some psycho bastard said that it was a witch this is what gary foxtruff has to deal with and i fortunately am not living in the situation that he's living in i'm only living in texas and i will make an awful lot of complaints about living in such a backward community that i do but at least i don't have to deal with the nonsense that he does I agree. and the realities that he has to face that are so much more psychotic than anything i have ever encountered in my life i feel bad for complaining about how bad i think texas is 
It's obviously not that bad. Okay, welcome to the show. Um, when I saw that name, I thought it was—I thought it said Nephilim Free for a moment, and I became somewhat concerned. So we can just call you Neff. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello. Right. What I wanted to talk about was um, I don't know how to fix problems in the Congo, but in some, uh, but in somewhere like the UK or somewhere like the US, um, I don't see why we shouldn't have a law that says that uh, accusing other people of witchcraft is illegal. Uh, make it something that's very minor, but enough so that it flashes it up to social services, for example, so that like a kid at school can say to a teacher, you know, um, you know, my parents are accusing me of doing things. Or it just gives a framework, because at the moment, it, say in like that situation where there was the murder, um, while that's beginning, before that gets bad, there's no way of flagging it up. There's no one to go talk to about it. I wondered what you thought. Yeah. Well, I'd like to throw something in. As a Texas resident, I've seen many instances here in Texas where there have been crimes carried off of the, including the murder of children or the torture of children that was religiously based. And whereas religion gets a free pass from so many different things, one of the problems that religion has is it is a perfect mask for psychosis, for schizophrenia, and for a number of other mental disorders, self-justifying mental disorders that glom on to religion and then conceal themselves entirely. It's like when you've got the Bluetooth and you couldn't tell, does somebody have a Bluetooth in their ear or are they schizophrenic? Well, this is what religion does. It conceals whether or not somebody is mentally damaged. We had this one woman in Houston a few years ago who ran off and, and, and killed all five of her children, drowned them all in sequence in her bathtub, one after the other. And then you get the last child, a five-year-old child, keep his mother, and she finally you know, gets him and holds him under the bathwater. And all of this was to prevent them from having their souls corrupted by Satan. What I would like to see as far as legislation is a recognition of the fact that so many people, and I could, I, believe me, I, I could go on for an hour on this, just on the crimes that have been conducted here in Texas and nowhere else based on religion that, that have resulted in the murder or torture of children, that when people bring up religion as a justification, for any of these things, or any of these horrors that they want to vision against other people, or the accusations that they make based on religious experience, or religious teaching, or religious purification, or whatever you, what the hell you want to call it, when they when they bring up religion as a motivation for anything, I would think that state uh, uh, that, that, that that child protective services or that that state organizations would look at religious motivation as being possibly rooted in psychosis rather than actual spiritualism if there is such a thing. Because in every instance that I know of, spiritual beliefs where they have resulted in criminal activity like this has eventually been linked to psychosis and never to miraculous or divine revelation. So I would like to see the laws start to be less permissive of religious belief. And when you start talking about, you know, the, the, that God told you to stave in the sons, stave in the, the skulls of your own sons, I think it, we ought to start looking at people and say, well, okay, well, is this God in this room, just like the Simpsons did, where they, they made a parody of this. But we need to start treating, we, we need to, the culture of the United States, or at least places where religion has a, a dominant foothold, need to start evaluating how often they are associated with insanity and how rarely they are justified by any means at all. So that when they start bringing up religion as an excuse for anything that they do, they should be questioned on that and they should be scrutinized simply because they evoked that excuse card. Anybody else want to take this? Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that, but uh, I'm, I'm not overly optimistic, I'm afraid. 
Um, there was an article that came out on the BBC website um, shortly after the verdicts were delivered, and it referred to the, what was obviously recognised as the problem. Uh, I'll just read a little bit of it. It said, however, some campaigners said that they believed the fundamental problem was that politicians did not want to tackle the issue because they thought it would be too racially sensitive. Uh, quoting someone from the chairman of the British Federation of Race, Race Equality Councils, it says, there isn't the co commitment by the government to bring this um, thing wide open. They are too scared of accused of being racist. Uh, it then goes on to say that a quote from someone from the Department of Education saying that the Metropolitan Police have been retrained and they're coming up with new proposals to tackle faith-based child abuse and so on. But if it's the case in this country that politicians are too scared to do something because they'll be accused of being racist, then the idea that in America um, you're going to pass any sort of legislation that uh, questions people's faith is, I think, Aaron, being extremely optimistic, isn't it? Well, it, it no may politicians be. It may be optimistic. Issue in America. But we, we have to address this anyway. But you don't understand all the stories that I've heard of this kind. Living here in Texas, I've been watching the local news back when I still did watch the local news. I've heard many occasions when people have murdered their own children on the basis of religion and then try to use religion to justify that. And then try to use religion as a way of... It, but it doesn't of, succeed, as, does it? Well, yeah, okay, if, when, you, when, when a guy names his children faith and liberty and then has faith and liberty get on the phone with the with the mother recently after a divorce and then has them report to the mother that he's now holding a gun to both of their heads and so that the mother has to listen to the gunshot as both of their brains are being blown out then he goes across the street and has a tattoo done to show you know faith and liberty tattooed in his shoulder to show how much he loved his children because he's making up these excuses in his head. There has to be a correlate. This happened in Dallas, by the way, not so many years ago. This is one of the many examples that I know of. When you have religion so closely intertwined with psychosis, with murder, with criminality, with child abuse, and we know statistically that child abuse and especially child molestation is almost exclusively linked with religious belief that the more religious you are, the more likely you are to abuse or molest your children, then we ought to have recognition of that and stop using family values as the catchphrase for molesting and killing our own children because we want to believe something that doesn't make any sense. There has to be a way that we can stem the tide on this. And this is... This is one of the reasons that I'm so motivated, and this is the reason that I sound so crazy standing on my, my soapbox saying these things that I do, because I have to listen to this stuff. And I don't know any other way to stop it other than getting on shows like this and making a big damn deal of it so that other people become outraged too. This is why I became involved in American Atheist. This is why I ask for people to contact me when you hear stories like this. If you want somebody that's going to go off on a story like this, Call me. I'm the guy that will go off on a story like this. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, can we go back to the caller? Then I'm going to move that, remove you and uh, deal with all the text questions very quickly because I noticed that we're running short of time. And I also needed to throw in one other thing, too. Helen Pabio used the race card many times when they were talking about how she was using... This, this religion to do the torture of the children and everything. She, uh, she blamed people for calling her racist. She said all of these accusations were racially based. None of them were, and none of them are. But then she also evoked Harry Potter. And so did the people in the news story that you commented on at the beginning of this show, where the people were murdered there in London, where the 15-year-old the, the, the child was murdered there in London. They interviewed those people, his siblings, and his own siblings, blamed Harry Potter for this, as if there's any correlation for that at all. That's why there needs to be a level of sanity brought forward on this, and that's why there needs to be a recognition that religion isn't just a freedom of belief, that religion very often is tied in the concealment of psychosis, and that maybe when somebody brings up their religious belief as being a motivation for the reason that they do anything, this should raise a little red flag for us that maybe that person's crazy. 
Just a quick, quick correction there. Uh, in the promotional video, the people being interviewed were not siblings. They were people who had grown up with the uh, woman that was convicted. Okay. Sorry, Stacey, do go on. Oh, I was just going to say that's her excuse for me. Besides me being possessed by the devil or married to the devil, I don't know what she claims I am. But she is mainly claimed that I'm just being racist. That's what this is about. It's all about racism. I'm being racist against her because she's African. Uh I can personally attest that Stacy is not married to the devil because my sky clad <laughs> ceremony was with a different woman than her. <laughs> well, Scooter right, this KPFT, Scooter KPFT said this thing is awful. I don't know exactly what he meant by this thing. But, okay, so I'm reading the next question. If so few people accept evolution, has the scientific community failed to communicate to, real, no, to lay people? No. It's not that the scientific community has failed to relate. It's that the scientific community can only do what government agencies allow it to do. And the education administration and the government and other entities that are involved in all of this are run by the religious conservatives. And that's where your real problem is. People don't get an education. Okay, next question. Well, I wasn't done. People don't get an education for free the way they can in... Yeah, you yeah, are. Oh, oh, it's, oh, go, go on, then. Uh, okay, well, never mind. I could soapbox on this for a long time. I'll let it go. I know. That's why I well, stopped is you. Is burning, burning witches, witches such really such thing? a bad thing? <laughs> yes. Yes, it's the it's the it's not adults that they're accusing of being a witch. If I want to say I'm a witch and some crazy religious organization comes and burns me, I mean it's a little it's still bad, but it's different than accusing a child that has no clue what you're talking about and then punishing them after you accuse them. That's the ridiculous part. So yes, bad. Bad to burn witches. How would fundamental Christians account for life being found on other planets? They would deny it and say it was a scientific uh, evolutionist Darwinistic uh, conspiracy, I guess. Um, I can deal with this one. In UK, can religion be taxed? No, they have tax exemption. Um, that Well, they get automatic uh, charitable status if they're religious, and therefore they get um, uh, tax benefits as a result. Uh, concordance isn't here, so uh, he's had to disappear, so we'll leave that one. Uh, no one will know because no one will define a witch. No. Or a kind. Don't know. Stacy, any ideas? How does someone become a witch hunter? <laughs> well, a witch hunter. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I know how to defeat a witch hunter now, but uh, not to actually become one. Yeah, I, I have the necessary hat and jacket to be a vampire hunter, but I don't know what the uniform is for witch hunting. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, do you ever think that will become a point in the, in the modern world where there will be no religion? No, because I think that uh, religion is too ingrained into our psyche, and there are psychological reasons why people are religious that it will take an awfully long time. We will, we will be extinct as a species before religion is gone. That's one for you, Aaron. What are you drinking? What? <laughs> okay. Um, I had started with a, a Bellhaven Scottish brew, or a Scottish ale, and I had moved on to a Storm King Extra Stout, which was done by Victory. And I recommend Victory. They're a local domestic brewer, but they make a, the, the stout that they make, the Storm King, is very good, and so is their Golden Monkey. There's my product endorsement. Okay, back on topic. How do we deal with other Pentecostal churches that might not be as extreme as HU, but are still dangerous? From D. Landon Cole. Hi, D. Landon. Hope you're well. Unfortunately, you might be well, but no one's answering your question. I don't know. I can't answer it. I'm sure Owen always has an answer for everything. Oh, well, thank you, DPR. How do we deal with other per 
Pent Church? Pentecostal Pentecostal, churches, I think. That, okay, that, that might not be as extreme as HU, but are still dangerous. Again, applying the scientific method for any of their claims. Um, I don't know of any other extremes that you could be talking about that wouldn't be as extreme as this. I don't know what else the Pentecostal Church is, is preaching, except when they talk about maybe trying to avoid medical care uh, for their students, or, or uh, when they're when they're trying to, to do political advocacy for a candidate, or boycotting an industry because they were uh, they, they because that company refused to deny rights of gays or what have you. There needs to be a public analysis of the justification of their claim. And simply because they claim family values when they probably really don't apply, I don't think it's going to just be justified anymore. I think we need to have a lot more critical analysis of religious claims. And that's my answer. Uh, apparently we had a live caller who uh, left. Um, we'll, we'll try and squeeze your call in if you want to come back. Um, so just submit another question. Um, I think Alan Hoyle, we've answered that question earlier. Uh, so I'll miss that one and move on to... I'm not going to comment on that one. No idea. Um, wait, wait. What, probably what was the, the religious. I didn't get to see it. Is it harder to uh, successfully prosecute a religious leader or a Wall Street broker? It is definitely harder to prosecute a religious leader. Hands down. Do you see the extreme culture in Africa possibly causing missionaries to distance themselves more? I hope they distance themselves more. This is something I, I don't know. The, the Catholic Church, so far as I understand, has a very high presence in these countries. And I know that the evangelicals are on the uh, rise, but I don't know what the Pope or, or the Vatican is doing about this. One of the things I um, have always noticed is that very few religions ever speak out against any other religious group. So, don't yeah, know the about amusing that one, thing Matthew. is that here. Uh, oh, we've got a live you... question. We're back. Okay. Hello again. Ah, it's our Australian friend again. I was bored. I wonder what the lag's going to be like um, to Australia. Pretty bad. <laughs> um, all right. Basically, my question. Uh, my question is, what do you think causes this complete lack of compassion, or is it a different kind of compassion? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm up to another human being, because most human beings have a very reasonable, well, compa compassion. They, they feel a way to another human being. They don't want to see them hurt. But is them trying to get rid of the demons or so forth? Um, is that compassion or is that delusion all right now I don't know that that my own answer it's is indoctrination be, in my view yeah I don't know that my own answer is going to be um, a matter of bias or whether I can truly be objective in this but what I have seen too often in my own personal subjective experience is that religious believers want very much to have control over every aspect of other people's lives they want to command what you do in your bedroom. They want to command what you believe. They don't want to have, uh, they don't want to have even-handed discourse for all their claims of having you know, an equal rights or a level playing field. They, they want to control everything. And for all their claims of family values, they don't have family values. It's very selfish. It's very power-based. Um, and so I find it I find a very disturbing level of monitoring everything that you do, and controlling everything that you do, and governing everything that you do, to be consistent with a lot of religious belief. As is the inability to accept responsibility for anything that they do wrong, or to owe up or to accept any of their own errors. They do not make admissions to their own mistakes. They certainly do not seek to correct their own mistakes because they're not about truth. They're about assertion and it seems to be a power issue. All things level together. I could easily be wrong about that. I'll admit that. 
I don't think they will. My view is that um, the comment made by a uh, non-stamp collector in his latest video in the description, uh, I think he said something along the lines of you um, allowed an eight-year-old to grow up without the Bible, they would have a much better standard of mor morality than that which appears in the Bible. And I think that's true. And I think what the lack of compassion uh, that we see, and I presume you're talking about the ability to treat people so inhumanely, uh, is what it shows is just how powerful religious indoctrina indoctrination can be. Um, and, you know, we're, we're people on this show are often criticised for being too critical of religion. Um, I, I think, you know, what we've been talking about today is a classic example of, of, of just how dangerous uh, and how sick uh, religion can be. Um, it, it's clearly a very, very powerful, um, or it has a powerful effect on the psyche. No. It's child abuse all the way around. I have to agree with Stacy. What religion? I, I didn't hear what, what Stacy said. Religion, or Stacy said that religion is child abuse, and it's not just the abuse of children. It's the abuse of practically everything else. I mean, it's the reason that everyone wants to deny global warming. It's because they don't want to accept responsibility for their own actions. Whereas, what you usually get as atheists from the religious community is you will get accusations that the reason that we don't want to believe in their God, as if we could choose what we want to believe versus what we don't want to believe, it has nothing to do with whether it's evident or logical. They say that we don't believe because we don't want to and that's because we don't want to be accountable for, their, for our sins. The reality of Christian theology is that if we did believe we would still not be accountable for our sins because all of our sins can be forgiven except for the one sin of disbelief. And there's no way that anybody gets into heaven as an unbeliever, no matter how great, all based on the criteria of being gullible, of, being, of believing the same nonsense that they do. So there is not a moral aspect to this. The Bible does not include morals in it. It doesn't mandate morals. If you violate the Ten Commandments, Jesus himself says that you will still get into heaven as long as you believe he will be called least in heaven, but you will be least in heaven, not in hell. The only way to go to hell is to not believe and not pay the priests the tithe that they're asking for. That's the only criteria. And that's why I say that this is so closely tied to charlatans, to dishonest scams, but also to psychosis, because psychosis asks you to believe or <coughs> listen to the still small voices in your head that you would normally question out of simple reason, logic, and common sense, if there is such a thing. But religion promotes you or, or asks you to believe that, to buy into it, to try to, per to push your perception beyond the human limitations and accept whatever it is that whatever bias you already wanted to believe and then wholeheartedly assert that and shout it from the mountain this is one of the reasons that religion is so incredibly dangerous it does not and has not ever produced anything good it has always only ever been an impediment to progress whether it's science whether it's social services whether it's history, religion does more to promote racism and sexism and slavery and every other evil that we've ever had visited on our planet. Religion has been at the core promoting all of it. And yet, those who oppose that for the sake of equal rights, for the sake of allowing people to do whatever they want to in their own bedrooms or privacy and not be moderated and not have thought police visit upon them, we are considered immoral for wanting to have that kind of liberty. And that's part of the ultimate lie that I think religion is. In other words, the summary is I think religion is entirely evil. And again, please stop getting me up on my soapbox. I have this problem with this. Next well, person. All right, uh, Samuel, I'm going to uh, remove you now and move on to a text question. Uh, we'll see if we can get a few more in, but I do want to deal with this one because it is... Um, Let's it's highly relevant to the entire guest. show. Um, <laughs> I 
was just going to say that as an atheist, I've only been an atheist for about five and a half years, but as an atheist, I feel I am, uh, I, I hold myself accountable, which is more important than having something else to blame or uh, uh, I, them saying we're, we're afraid of being held accountable for our sins. I think I am held accountable more by myself than some imaginary God. That's all. Thank you. Well, there's another question. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I didn't hear you speaking. There's another question for you. I'm going to take it that this question is directed at uh, Ukbobia's uh, visit to Houston. Um, we'll deal with it on that basis to start with, and then a more general basis, I'll let Aaron have another rant. What can people do to help? Let right now, Daisy do this the one. Word out. <laughs> right now, getting the word out is the best we can do. Um, and everyone has kind of different strengths, so it's whatever you can do. We've had organizations that um, fight for child rights in America that are sending letters to uh, Hillary Clinton. We, I have many other people helping through whatever avenue they can, but pretty much getting the word out and um, us raising as much money as we possibly can to help this organization that's helping these kids in Nigeria. And by the way, I saw the question, can I have Stacy's cell phone number? You can if you donate a very large sum to my fundraiser. <laughs> Just like Helen Pavio, you donate enough, you get my number. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to throw in one other thing there. I am, I am acting in an official capacity as the Texas State Representative for American Atheists. And I've had a couple of... of uh, charges or missions or whatever that, that were initially given to me that, that, that I ended up not having to do anything about. But if there's anything that you need assistance with that's going on in Texas that you think higher powers or legal officials or government officials need to be made aware of, please contact me and I'll be rabid to help you. Okay, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up. This video will, or this program will be on YouTube within uh, 48 hours or so. Um, please give us some feedback. Uh, tell us what you think of the new format, which you prefer. Should we go back to the old format? Should we uh, stick with this one? Uh, what did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? So on and so forth. Do let us know uh, either on comments on YouTube or um, send any of us a message. Uh, can I thank very much Aaron Wright and Concordance. Concordance, unfortunately, had to leave early. Uh, and also our special guest, uh, Stacey Gonzalez, and, uh, of course, Tony for working behind the scenes. Last words, anyone, before I wrap it up? Thanks for having me and helping bring light to the situation. Thank you, Stacey, for being involved. Thank you both. I'll end the show. Stick with us. We'll have a chat afterwards. Thank you very much, everyone. See you in two weeks. We're not sure what's happening in two weeks because we're coming up to the Reason Rally. Um, so we will keep you informed. Okay. Thank